What's going on guys? Zerts here. For a couple of months now here on YouTube, I have been criticizing feminism quite harshly because I think it's a terrible ideology. And while I will no longer call myself an anti-feminist, I will still continue to criticize feminism because of all of the terrible things third wave feminism has to say about men, boys, and even the women they claim to want to protect and help out. So that introduction out the way, Throughout these last few months, I have noticed something very funny, very peculiar about feminists. And it was never actually overtly stated until very recently, until the last video response I uploaded yesterday. Well, I, yesterday to the time of this video. Now, the video response I uploaded yesterday to the time of the recording of this video was done to someone by the name of Anna Akana. She's a vlogger, comedian here on YouTube. I don't know if she actually calls herself a feminist, but I mean, um, the shoe fits. But, she said something. Overtly, uh, something very specific that I want to focus on, right? So b before I play that, let's talk about what I'm focusing on, what I've noticed. What I've noticed was, although it was never overtly said, it was always implied, but that feminists and the women who support these feminists don't want to be responsible for anything. They also don't want to do anything either. Think about it for a second. Think about all of the solutions feminism has ever stated for helping anything. Let's talk about Emma Watson's He for She campaign. The Impact 10x10x10 10 10 10 campaign thing. Have boys stand up for girls. Don't have the girls stand up for their own opinions. Have other men come in there and stand up for them. Right? Hmm. Let's talk about Ban Bossy. You know, don't teach girls to ignore insults or to reevaluate their behavior as someone criticizes it. No. Tell other people to just stop using the word bossy. What else is there? Street harassment. Don't tell women to ignore street harassment or to tell them to learn some level of self-defense in case something bad happens. No. Try to create a law that makes it illegal for men to comment upon women's bodies, right? Make a big fuss out of people calling you beautiful and saying hi to you, instead of just ignoring it. Rape culture. Don't teach women how to defend themselves or how to avoid rape. That's victim blaming. No, instead, teach young boys just not to rape. Just don't do it. Rape is not an option. Every solution that feminists have ever implied always had men doing something, but never the women doing it. And I always thought the reason for that is because for some odd reason, a lot of women in our society are very passive in nature, right? Now, I don't know if this is a trait that's either taught to these young ladies or if it's something inherent in females, but women are very passive creatures, I've noticed. I'll give you an example of that passivity. You ever have a girl, you know, kind of communicate with the way she gave you her phone number, give it to you, right? And when you text her a couple of times, she never responds or she says she's busy. Watch this. That is passivity. That, that's textbook passivity. And I'll show you how. Because one, she gave you the number, even though she didn't want you. So she did what you wanted her to do, even though she didn't want to do it. Passive. And then when you try to make plans with her and talk to her, she literally doesn't say anything. She just ignores you. Again, passive. I don't know if this is, again, an inherent nature of women to be incredibly passive or it's something that young white suburban women are taught. Because I've only seen this super level of passivity in <laughs> privileged white women. And again, I'm not saying that to be racist. That's just, that's just what I've noticed. Like, a lot of other black and Latino girls, like, they'll just, they'll just say no. They'll just, they'll just, they just reject me. Like, black girls and Latino girls, they just, they just say no. It's really that simple. But the white girls, no. They, they play this passive BS game. So again, like I said, I don't, I don't know if it's taught or if it's inherent, I don't know. But I have noticed that. I've noticed that feminism, they, again, and a lot of people have called them lazy, right, and entitled. And they certainly are entitled, right, and as far as lazy goes, well, they campaign quite a bit, so I don't know about that whole lazy thing. But they certainly are entitled. Really entitled. Which is funny. I might have to make a whole video on why these women feel so god darn entitled. I think I have an answer for that one, too. But now, here's the real thing that's really got me about feminists. Feminists got everything that they ever wanted, and continue to get everything that they ever want, with the exception of the whole Hobby Lobby thing, which is why they thought that they deserve free birth control still eludes me, but whenever feminists ask for anything from the government or from people, they got it. He for she. 
a whole bunch of guys went and did the fuel he for she commitment and then made videos telling other people to go do it. So I mean, a woman says she wants it, she gets it. Right? So they always get what they want. And maybe that's why they feel so entitled. But, again, feminists have gotten exactly what they want. And I'm sure a lot of you people were really, really smart to figure that out a long time ago. You see, feminists a long time ago already became equal to men. And at this point now, they're just vying for power. It's a movement for female supremacy. But it goes deeper than that. You see, feminists and women are actually now starting to be treated like men. A lot of people are starting to not care about their problems. A lot of people are starting to be more straightforward with them. A lot of people are starting to criticize women a lot more often. And what you began to notice is women don't like that too much. They don't really like being treated like men. That whole protect yourself from being raped thing, that's called responsibility. You see, the thing with feminism, or like a lot of these entitled girls don't know, is that when you gave them all this choice, all this agency, you know, even with the sexual revolution, with birth control, with the agency to choose, they forgot one thing. They forgot that with great power, there must also come great responsibility. Slut shaming. It seems that feminists want to have everything, but they don't want the responsibility that comes with it. And I said slut shaming because it's a great example. They want to be promiscuous, they want to do everything, they want to enjoy their fun, have sex with all these different guys, and then they still want to be thought of as viable partners to be in relationships with, even though there's evidence to suggest that they're not. <laughs> That's, that is, that, that is freaking entitlement, that you think that you can just go and do whatever you want and then come back and still have some guy just accept you for what you are when you don't even like him for being a man. But, you know, all that aside, Again, feminists, they want the agency and the power of being sexually liberated, but they don't want the responsibility of protecting themselves from not only STDs, but the very real possibility of rape, even though rape is actually a crime that doesn't happen very often, which you would think makes feminists really happy, but of course it doesn't, because the whole rape culture gives them purpose. But yeah, again, they, they want the agency, they want the choice, they want the ability to do things, but they don't want the responsibility to come. And again, as I said, up until this point, it's always been implied, but it was never ver spoken so clearly and until, until Anna. And I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about right here. Because I am seriously so fucking tired of being responsible for not getting raped. A lot of MGTOWs like to use the red pill as their movie analogy to describe their enlightenment and whatnot. So... Let's see if I can do that too. I am going to use a movie analogy myself and hopefully I can get this trending. I mean, again, I'm not very popular on YouTube, but if I got this trending, I'd feel really good about myself, okay? Feminism is like the ending of Aladdin. Now, a lot of you people are probably sitting there thinking, I don't remember the ending of Aladdin. Or you're probably thinking, I never even saw the ending of Aladdin. I never even saw the movie. Don't worry. I'm going to play you the ending of Aladdin. And I'm going to see if you guys can figure out how feminism is just like that. Let the clip roll. The genie. The genie. The genie has more power than you'll ever have. What? He gave you your power. He can take it away. Al, what are you doing? Why are you bringing me into this? Face it, Jafar. You're still just second best. You're right. His power does exceed my own. Not, not for long. <laughs> the boy is crazy. He's a little punch drunk. One too many hits for the snake. Slave! I make my third wish. I wish to be an all-powerful genie! All right. Your wish is my command. Way to go, Al. <laughs>
itty bitty living space. So, hopefully you guys caught that. If you didn't catch that, let me explain it. Aladdin represents the feminists. Jafar represents women. And the genie represents men and the government. Let's see if you can put that all together. Are you still confused? Okay. Bear with me. Aladdin tells Jafar, the person who already won, Jafar already beat Aladdin, he already had the genie under his control, he was already the most powerful sorcerer in the world. So Aladdin says, well, Jafar, you're still just second best to the genie. The genie has more power than you have. The genie even gave you your power. I mean, shouldn't you want to try to be like him? And Jafar, lusting for power, so arrogant, even in his own victory, ponders to himself, hmm, you're right. The genie does have more power than I do. So Jafar wishes to become a genie, i.e. women wish to become just like men. But what they didn't realize was with all of that cosmic power that came with being a genie, came years of being trapped in a lamp. The lamp in the analogy represents responsibility. With great power, there must also come great responsibility. And yeah, Spider-Man has a pretty great moral framework. You see, feminists got exactly what they wanted a long time ago. They got men to treat women as equals. They got men to treat women like men. And a lot of these women are starting to figure out they don't like being treated like men. Because after all, you wanted to be a genie, you got it. Everything that goes with it. That being said, I certainly hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And if you did, man, go ahead and click that like button. Go ahead and click that subscribe button. Comment in the comment box below. And as always, have a great day. I will see you cool cats soon. Adios.